inside the circle. Individual rankings, Sean, Mark, your host. 132, 138, 145, and 152. I'm here to tell you right now, you're going to love these rankings. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm more thinking of, well, if you've come this far, you'll probably go to the end. I mean, you yeah. might as well waste the whole 45 minutes of your life. You're never going to get back. And True, Dan. See, and see this out. So, True, Dan. Started. We're going to start at 132 here, work our way up. And at 132, at fourth right now, we have Monroe from Davison. Like him, Demetrius. Like him. I do like him. Talk he, to him. He won the old Tangy tournament start of season. Had a great showing yesterday at uh, uh, Delaware Duel. Yep. Did the district pleasure last year. Really coming to his own. Hardworking kid. I expect him to have a lot of success. This is kind of a crowd the way to me. There's a lot of guys laying around in the weeds that could be pretty tough. Maybe uh, Teddy Hill from Upper Arlington ends up here. Maybe Yaus from. Uh, Dublin Kaufman, it's Yos, I know, whatever. but I love yeah. it's Yos to me now. We're just going with Yos for the next three months. He might be somewhere in the mix, but right now we're going to have him at number, up on row at number four. At number three, it's just kind of starting to get uh, a little dice in me. I'm not sure if he can get there, but I, I guess we're going to put him there. It's Furnace from Liberty. He hasn't wrestled there yet. I just got to think with the crush of bodies they have, he's going to come down. He's been certified there. I think yeah. that's the plan. I really don't like to rank guys at weights they have not competed at yet, but sometimes you just got to see the writing on the wall. And right now we're going with two-time state qualifier, mm -hmm. Furnace from Liberty at number three. At number two, probably the hottest guy at 132 right now, Oh, definitely. Tell him who it is. No clue over here. Uh, Trey Bogatich. Yeah, that I big, know exactly uh, who it was. <laughs> Western Hill Central. Had Sean. that big day at Marysville where he beats two state qualifiers. Yeah. Um, they are another team that wrestles kind of out of the way. Hasn't entered an individual tournament yet. They've just wrestled duels. They will be at West Jeff, yeah. so maybe we'll get some top top competition there. And they're also going to be newly added to Dublin Sciota. So, and the Kevin Cleveland, Ooh. so he's going to run into some hammers there, and we'll really find out a little bit more about him now. But right now, two-time district placer, Bogutin sits at number two. Nice. And at number one, Josh Grant, West from North. I mean, this guy is just dynamite in the bottle. He's very explosive. State qualifier last year, got second in the district. Uh, it's just, uh, we didn't get to see him wrestle with Highland. He was taking his ACTs, but he will be at Medina. He hasn't lost yet. I'm excited to see him there, but right now, Josh Grant is our number one ranked guy at 132. Moving up to 138, and this is where it really starts to get dicey, like where the bodies are really starting to get crazy. I mean, once we get to 45, it's out of control. It's all, you know, every man for himself. We're going to be army crawling around <laughs> the mat, just avoiding mines. I got dice and darts over here. Yeah, you just let me know. we're going to be at. But uh, 38 is kind of a little bit of the calm before it gets really, really crazy. Gotcha. Number four, we're going to start the season out with Block from Hilliard Darby. I dig it. Solid guy, wrestled up at 145 last week at Highland. Didn't get to participate in the district tournament last year because of injury. But another guy who's been doing beast mode all year, just continues to move, went out to Virginia to wrestle. I mean, this guy's been wrestling all around the place. Really deserving, hardworking guy that we're kind of rooting for. Let him have a good season and get himself to the uh, state tournament. Certainly. At number three, and this is where it's just, I'm just a gut feeling. We're going Walker Hurd. State qualifier from Marysville. I know he's been up at 45. They didn't get a rest on the Swoka, so we didn't get to see him participate down right. there to see how far he's come. But I just got to think with the crush of bodies we're going to talk about at 45 and 52, this is just a good place for him to start. I think he could possibly win this weight class, depending on how it shakes out. But I just got a gut feeling he's going to end up here. And right now, we're going to have Hurd at number three. At number one and two, I flopped this back and forth all day. I sent Mark actually two pictures because I couldn't decide which guy I wanted to put here because they've both been all too impressive to me. But I decided on going with one. So at number two, we're going to go Carson Karchalava from Old Tangy Liberty. Good job. This guy absolutely just pulverized. And when I say pulverized, there's probably not a big enough word to describe the dismantling he did of the weight class up at Liberty. And I would have him ranked number one, but the fact he did it at 45 and then come down to 38, right. which we talked about with Zach uh, Furnace at 32, I don't really want to put guys there until I see him compete. Uh, this guy is everything you ever thought he would be. He was kind of like the Kaiser Sose guy to me. Uh, from usual suspects. We kept hearing how great he is and he's more myth than legend, but no one ever sees him wrestle. Well, we finally got to see him wrestle and he just uh, beat the uh, kid who got fifth, fifth in the state from West Virginia in the finals, beats the state alternate from the Cleveland district from Olmstead Falls like a hammer. Uh, uh, 17-2, 17-3, something ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And I don't even think he ever took his uh, jacket off when he did it. But uh, No, they have to. It's 
That's in FHS, yeah, it's, uh, it's a bylaw. Okay. Yep. Did you have to take this to Balkan off? Uh, yeah. Gotta have Anyways, it. I think he'll probably be wrestling on uh, 45 at Brexville as Grenier is oh. still a little banged yeah, up and we'll see him. So I guess the big question is, can he get to 38? I'm going to say now, if this kid steps on the mat at Darby, at basically any weight, I think he might be considered the favorite. He's just really that good to me, and his movement is sick. So right now, we're going to put Karchalava too. So who's our number one? That is a great question. If you're telling me Karchalava, and then you're going to build him up, and he's the number two, yeah. who is the number hey, one? you got to be someone like Superman or something, though. Uh, no, actually, it's going to be a step below, because let's be honest here. Is that Superman. Iron Man? Uh, no, Iron no, but I'll tell you what, your number one is legit. Tell him. Number one ranked guy now, Luke Hernandez, Tri Valley. And talk about another guy when me and Mark talk about. You go to any competition now, you go to Tri Valley, bro. Tri Valley, bro. They're coming like, from Tri Valley, yeah. and they're there, and they're there to work, and they do. And it, ah. You know, this hey, guy made it. a huge jump last year. I mean, he goes from not making it to the district tournament to being a state placer from sophomore to junior. And I just think he has a little bit more room to grow. This guy's a big, strong guy. Just got recently third up at North Canton Hoover. Won the old Tangy tournament to start the season in a very feisty match as well. And this right now is our number one guy. They will be at the Greater Miami Valley tournament. So they'll wrestle somebody from Graham, somebody from another one. of sure. I, mean, I think they have like almost 60 schools in that tournament. So I'm sure he's going to get some competition. It'll give us a better idea how much his progression has come right on. from last year to this year. And other guys around there, we talked about Daniel Segura from uh, Dublin, Sciota, another guy that could be a player there. So keep an eye on this guy. Where will he be at on January the 7th? I'll tell you, that Kevin Cleveland. Cleveland. Yeah, Kevin Cleveland. Come on, yeah, come man. on, man. I had that so one. We're going to have a great mix of talent there. So right now, that is how we see 138 shape. What about 145? Sean, you're talking to me about 132 and 138, how they're crazy and we're building up steam. 145 is the landmine, bro. It is Blow the landmine. And, we're, and this is really just a shot in the dark. I mean, there's no way to project where these kids are actually yeah. going to be. I mean, you have Camp Jenkins oh, coming yeah. down from 52 to 45. You have Demas wrestling 45, and then you're going and 52. 52. Then you have Gore wrestling 45 and 52. You have Jake Marsh who comes down to 45. Then he's entered the smoke at 52. I mean, these guys are really moving all around. And then we don't even know where Maddox is going to show up. That that guy could be at 126. That guy could be at 195. I mean, he's a riddle wrapped in an enigma. I mean, we just don't know where he's going to end up. And I think he is the, uh, I think he's the centerpiece here. I yeah. think he's going to dictate the landscape of both weight classes. I think that he's going to be the first piece to fall, and, and then, then everyone else is going to kind gotcha. of move around there. But again, until they step on the mat at sectionals, I'm really not comfortable. And every time I think I have this weight figured out and fits into, like, I just got a gut feeling he, this guy's going to go here or this guy will move there, I get more information that just blurs that picture even more to me. So this really is just kind of a gut feeling that I don't feel good about. But I'm not sure where to put everyone, and I'm just going to okay. put him at 45 and 50 just to show a landscape of the weight class. All right. At number four, we're going to go with Maddox. Not that he's the fourth guy here. We just don't rank guys on top that haven't wrestled. When Shakur Laney, Chandler Menard, uh, Clayton Ray, from, since when those guys all yeah, moved, yeah. we never put them on top until they actually made their debut. We put them in fourth just to show the landscape of the weight class. So he's clearly not fourth, but we're just going to slide him at 45 to say, hey, we just think he's going to end up at 45. So, what's January 12th? Is that the Yeah, date? I think that's a date. Yep. I think they have a date of January 12th where we'll actually be halfway through the season where he can start wrestling. We'll get a better idea where he'll be at. I mean, he could start at 52, just to work, work out some of us and get your weight back in the day. But we're going to slide him at uh, 45 to start. Sean, right. with all that explanation, I wouldn't be surprised for Maddox to come hunt me down. Put me a fourth? I just kind of got it. He wants to be number one. Well, bottom I'm glad line. He's hunt you down. Yeah, I'd well. Thank yeah, you. no problem. Thank I'm you an for easy target. That bullseye yeah. on your target and, uh, not mine. Hey, I love it, man. That's a great explanation. Um, obviously, he's going to be doing. He'll be well. Tell me who you got, number three. At number three, we're going third in the state and three-time state qualifier, Trey Grenier. I mean, that's just how insane it is. This guy's a three-time state qualifier and he got third in the state, which is a seatable wrestler, which is crazy to me. I mean, yeah. We have three seatable wrestlers in the state tournament in this district. So Trey's uh, wrestled great Ironman, got hurt on day two, and yeah. we haven't seen him since. I Like we talked about with Carter Lava, I don't expect uh, Grenier to wrestle at Brexville. He's probably going to be out to mid-January just nursing yeah. his uh, injury, making sure he's ready for that push late in the season. But a solid three, uh, nevertheless. At number two, this is the one that's going to be a head scratcher that people think, I don't know if you're right here. And I don't even know if I'm right either. It's just kind of a gut feeling. We're going to put Jake Marsh. 
Yeah, Jake Marsh at number two at 45. I know there's murmurs on him being 52, 45. I mean, he's going to kind of bounce around, give himself options is why he came down to 145. I mean, options are always good. Yeah, I like options. Good. But I just think at the end of the day, this is a guy who is competing for a title. Being a state qualifier and even being a state placer is not his focus at all. And again, if Maddox moves to 52, I would expect Marsh definitely to be a 45, just a gut instinct. Mm -hmm. So again, this is a weight that's just going to have to shape out and we'll have to see. But right now, I'm going to put him at number second. And I almost had him number one. And number one is Dom Dimas, Dublin Kaufman. And probably one of the most exciting wrestlers we've seen in the last 20 years. I mean, this guy is throws and his, his movement is just absolutely sick. But his match with uh, Jake at Ironman was three to two and right it could have gone either way. It was a takedown on the edge. It just yeah. really could go either way. And again, do I want to face Carr in that or do I want to go try to win it among this thing? Again, I really think Maddox is the key here. But right now we're going Demas, Marsh, Grenier, and Maddox. And we're not even talking about the other guys there that have already come down to 45 right. because we're going to play some 52 just to show the landscape of both those weights to get an idea. There's probably 10 or 11 guys floating around here, yeah. and how they're going to divide by the time we get to the sectional tournament, I guess, is anyone's guess or mystery at this point. And we'll talk about those guys at 152. Let's talk about those guys at 152. The only thing I can think of right now, Friday Night Fireworks. The district tournament is going to be out of control on these two weight classes alone, bro. You know, you say Friday night, but I'm thinking Friday. Like, we're not going to wait till it gets 4 o'clock. Like, out of the boom, we're going to yeah. start banging here. So. Oh, buddy. 4 o'clock, first match happens. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, tell me 152, man. We can't get too far ahead of ourselves. 152, last year's state qualifier at 38. Now at 60, but I think he's going to move down to 52. Yeah. Riley Amador from Hilliard Bradley. Started out the season 60, got second up at Olden Tangy um, Lewis Center yeah. Tournament. They usually go to the uh, Greater Miami Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they wrestled over this weekend. I'm not sure. They, they may have gone to Fairmont, but man, I really got to check. I, the weather was so bad, yeah. it, it could have prevented them from Solid going. guy all the way around. I mean, when, again, when you get getting these weight classes where you have state placers and state qualifiers as the four guy, that Ooh. shows the balance of his weight class. Right, so right now we'll start the at fourth. At number three, we're going uh, the state qualifier Cam Jenkins from yeah. West Westville North. North. A guy who, when I seen he cut down to 45, I was like, man, this is like the most surprising thing again. To me. I mean, who wants to move into 45? Usually these guys are running for this. I really thought we'd see some of these 145s up to 220 to get away. They just couldn't get yes. blown up away. But he came down again. You never know how the injury bug or how things might shape right. out again. I guess he's just giving himself options. Uh, had a good showing at uh, Highland. Won over state qualifier Hurd. And a matchup probably could have been refed a little bit differently. But nevertheless, the key is to win, and he did. So right now at number three at 52, we're going to go to Cam Jenkins. Right now, so who's our two? We're forgetting about some guy. There's got to be some guy. You must have missed him in our weight class. No, no, no. We're no. going to go Xander Gore here. And I know this might be another shock. A guy who's bumped around from 45 to 52. Yeah. Uh, I just think he might end up here. I think him and Max Hall might both move up. It just seems like it might be a little bit of a... Uh, I don't want to say easier because I don't think it's easier, but no. less landmines to step on. You're going to step on a landmine somewhere. But if I have to take my chance of stepping on one or two landmines as opposed to like four or five, I think I'll take my chances with one or two. No, Sean, they are the landmine. Continue. They are the Sorry. landline. Wow. <laughs> I didn't get that in the rehearsal. But anyway, uh, Gore gets second yep. at his own tournament. To uh, He gets first at his own tournament, then he gets second at the Highland, and then he gets third at uh, North Kent Hoover. So this guy's had a top three finishes some pretty much solid tournaments all the way around. Another one of those beast mode guys that I think I've seen this guy out of Virginia. I've seen him at the uh, Freestyle State Tournament, the Greco. I mean, this guy's doing a competition act. This guy's really done a lot of wrestling. You can see the improvement. Yes. When you see him around, I mean, he's yeah. really more aggressive than he has in the past. And this guy reminds me, I say it all the time, of Jordan Branham from Miamisburg. They're like the same people. A guy that just kind of hangs around, you're not sure, but they get to the district tournament, you can't kill these guys. Right on, man. Like cockroaches. You just can't kill They're like cockroaches. You cannot kill these guys. And this is just one of those guys that I'm really not concerned what he does during the season. Yeah. I just know when the lights come on. The lights come yes. on. So. Certainly. Hey, I realize we're on the number two guy here, and we're talking a lot about it. Xander Gore is worth talking about. He is, you mentioned he's getting more aggressive. I think that is the, the, the turning point for him. He, he had great technique, freshman, sophomore year, state qualifier, did well. I think the, the difference is he goes out and gets it now. It's just a different mindset of waiting to see how things happen and going out and making it happen. Different mindset, I think Xander Gore has that. It's the key to life, Mark. I'll start with wrestling. So who's our number one? 
I mean, no clue. There's a lot of chaos here. I mean, this is another guy that I think is a no-brainer if you got the other guys down at 45. It's Connor Brady. Yeah. I've always been a high fan of this guy. I mean, he takes Hovis to overtime at the Ironman nationally ranked guys who ends up beating the number one guy yes. in a car up there. This guy ends up getting third in his own right. I think yeah. he's maybe eighth in the country, maybe ninth if you ask some other uh, guy who probably shouldn't be doing rankings. Um, but he's going to be a tough out. Had an extraordinary uh, tournament yesterday where he just absolutely blazed the field. Uh, at 152, uh, again, he got third. They will be at Brexville. I'm just assuming we're going to run into someone there good. I would assume, yeah. Good, with all good the assumption. There. My, Mechanicsburg's there. I mean, there's just a lot of big schools there. So, uh, again, he's just going to be a tough out. That's going to be a great tournament. And it's always a great oh. tournament. So, right now, we're going to have Brady number one, Gore number two, Jenkins number three, and Amador number four. But, again, these are just shots in the dark here. Until these guys really fill out the pegging order. Oh. Until they weigh in at sexual tournament. Yeah, until they weigh in and find out the pecking order. I mean, these guys know each other. We're all talk amongst each other. Yeah. I'm, shoot, I'm assuming at the end of the day we're going to have five in one way class and five in the other. Probably, and yeah. It's going to come down to the draw. So that's what we have right now. Hey, that's great. There's your 132, 138, 145, and 152. Coming up next, 160, 170, and 182 pounds. Only doing three next time. So now you are inside the circle.